Okay. So, as you can see from the from the slide, uh, today's class will be filters, or you can call it microwave filters. Uh, it's very important uh, part or component of RF and microwave systems is filters. So we'll discuss today about microwave filters. So microwave filters uh, have one basic function. They are designed to eliminate, uh, you can say to reduce uh, this unwanted uh, harmonics or unwanted frequencies. In other, in other words, you can put filters in microwave systems are used or designed to clean the signal. Uh, there are many unwanted frequency components in our signal, so we need a device which uh, performs this cleaning uh, purpose. This device, what we call it, a microwave filter. That's our topic today. So it's, uh, it's very important uh, component. Uh, so there are three types of microwave filters, classification, uh, band pass, low pass, and high pass filters. So uh, let's start from the band pass filter and we'll see example. So band pass filter, as we, as, as we have discussed, filters are designed to pass specific uh, frequency or bands of frequency and reject other unwanted uh, species or harmonic frequencies. That's the main uh, function of any filter. So when you come to band pass filter, so band pass filters, uh, they are designed to pass a specific band of frequencies, as you can see in this diagram. Uh, a specific band of frequency uh, will be passed less than this frequency and greater than this frequency will be rejected. So band pass filters uh, pass a specific band of frequencies and reject frequencies below the and above that band. So this diagram, we have a band from, let's say, F1 up to F2. We call this a pass band. We call this a pass band. If you draw this like this, uh, we call this a pass band. So frequencies, or band of frequency in this range is allowed to pass any frequency below F1 or above F2 will be rejected by this device. That's why we call it band pass filter. Now let's see the specifications of this band pass filter. Uh, before we come to the specifications, as we have discussed in microwave uh, high frequency applications, the normal conventional lamp parameter components like uh, ceramic capacitor, carbon resistors, uh, they cannot be used to design our components, right? Because of what we have discussed in post chapter, uh, mainly because of three reasons, skin effect, lead reactance, and phase shift. Because of these three main reasons, the conventional lamp parameter components cannot be used to design our filters. Okay? In low frequency, you can design your low pass, high pass, or band pass filter from uh, your lamp parameter components capacitor, resistor, inductor, and so on. But here, in my high frequency applications, uh, we use microstrip or strip lines instead. 
to design these microwave filters. There are many design techniques. Uh, as you can see here, this is a band pass filter uh, from strip lines, micro strips. Uh, let me show you another one. These are low pass filters. Uh, also, as you can see here, it's constructed, designed from uh, a strip, a strip lens. Okay, strip lens. For example, this one is a low pass filter with cutoff frequency 2 gigahertz. Okay, this filter will pass all frequency up to 2 gigahertz. Uh, but above 2 gigahertz, the signals will be uh, blocked, rejected by this low pass filter. So, uh, we, we, we are designing microwave high frequency filters from distributed parameter uh, components, as you can see here. The normal lamp parameter components um, will not be used in filter design for microwave. Why? Because of three reasons what we have discussed previously. Skin effect, lead reactance effect, and the phase shift prohibited us from using this traditional uh, damped parameter components to design our filters. Okay. So, microwave or array filters as you can see here, they can be constructed from either micro strip or uh, strip lens. We can use this to fabricate our filters. So it's very important to understand the specifications of your filter. We are, we are, we are, we are discussing band pass. There are three types of filters. Band pass, low pass, and high pass filters. Now we are discussing band pass. It is designed to pass a band of frequency below or above this band, the, the signal will be uh, discriminated, rejected, attenuated by this filter. So uh, it's very important to, to see the specifications. So let's start from the first one, what you call it pass band. So, this diagram, as you can see, there is a frequency range. This frequency is designed uh, in some frequency range, frequency band, what we call it pass band, as you can see here, from, from F1 up to F2 is our pass band. So what's pass band miss? Pass band miss, where this is the area, it's the range of frequency, where we have minimum loss in the filter response. Any signal with frequency in the pass band has, when it passes through this filter, the loss, the attenuation is very much minimum. We call this loss insertion loss. If the frequency, if the signal frequency is within the pass band, when signal passes through this band pass filter, uh, the loss or attenuation is very minimal, which means with minimum loss, it is allowed to pass through the filter. This loss, what we call it insertion loss, okay? For example, as you can see here in the pass band, the insertion loss uh, may be 0.5 dB. 0.5 dB, what we call it a pass band. This, if this is zero, its signal is uh, terminated by this amount, 0 0.5 dB, okay? But the loss is, attenuation is very much minimal. That is the first specification. What is the pass band of uh, our filter? So when you see a band pass filter, it has a pass band. For example, this filter is designed uh, from, let's say, 2.1 gigahertz up to uh, 2.5 gigahertz. Passband. 
any filter has its own pass band. So this this uh, band pass filter, if it is designed in this pass band, which means all frequencies in this pass band, when it passes through the signal, when you apply your signal here and take your output here, uh, frequencies between this range uh, attenuated by very small amount, what we call it, insertion loss. Okay, uh, that's the first specification, pass band. Okay, next, what we call it ripple or pass band flatness. So when you see uh, this frequency response of the filter, in the pass band range, as you can see here, in the pass band range, the response is not flat. For different frequencies, frequency at this point and frequency at this point, the gain is different. What do we expect this pass band to be flat? Like this. Flat means uh, e flat means all frequencies in the pass band with uniform gain, uniform gain, flat pass band. But practically, there is a ripple mainly due to uh, when you connect different sections together, different filters in series or in cascade, uh, the result will be at the pass band will have a ripple. Okay. What's the problem with this ripple? gain fluctuation different frequencies even in our pass band different frequencies with different gain which causes a distortion okay this causes a distortion ripple causes a distortion our signal because different frequencies uh, has different uh, attenuation even in the pass band what we need is all frequencies in the pass band range uh, passes through the filter with uniform attenuation level, but uh, due to this ripple, uh, there, there will be some uh, distortion. So that's another specification we, we need to know about our filters. Okay, what we call it what? Ripple. Okay. So we have seen how many specifications? We have seen pass band. Inside the pass band, how much ripple it is. So you see here, uh, from maximum, from this ripple maximum to the ripple minimum, this range, what we call it uh, pass band flatness or ripple, uh, if minimum, Ripple means uh, good quality. Minimum, this filter causes minimum distortion to our signal. The higher the ripple, more distortion caused by the filter. So, the, what is the best? Uh, the ideal case. In ideal case, we have a flat pass band. All frequencies in the, our pass band, uh, when it passes through the filter, they have uniform attenuation then there is no distortion caused by the filter so what we have seen what is a pass band what is the insertion loss insertion loss is the attenuation of frequencies in the uh, pass band what uh, ideally when you your frequency is inside the pass band you expect no attenuation right uh, it is a required frequency, so we don't need to attenuate. It, it must be allowed to pass without attenuation. But still, uh, the required frequencies, when it passes through your filter, it is allowed to pass, but with uh, some loss. What that loss we call it insertion loss. Okay. So. We have discussed passband, insertion loss, ripple, and uh, 
bandwidth. What is the bandwidth of uh, your filter? So, as you can see here, uh, this is the uh, passband gain. So, uh, go down and decrease the by 3 dB on both sides. Okay. So, bandwidths, we call it 3 dB bandwidths. Why we call it 3 dB bandwidths? Because uh, the uh, on the response curve of the filter, we decreased by how much? From 3 dB from the insertion loss of the filter. So, as you can see here, this is the insertion loss, right? We have discussed this. In the past band, we have insertion loss at this point. How much, let's say? We lose 0.5 dB. Okay, so this is minus 0 0.5. Then decrease by 3 dB again. Then take this point, 3 dB points, or half power points. Uh, so the this frequency range between these half power points on the response curve of the filter, we call it 3 dB one bits. So if this is your uh, if this is your filter response, this is a maximum. So if this is a maximum, what is the three dB point? Three dB means uh, three dB means what? Uh, tail log of half. If you take logarithm of half, uh, logarithm of half, uh, and multiply it by 10, if you convert half into dB, 0 0.5, half, in, if you convert half into dB, dB means 10 log of half. How much? It is minus 3 dB. Okay, so that's why we call these points half power points. If this is, if a signal, at this frequency, if it is 100 watt power, at this point it will be 50 watt. This uh, half power points. So that that frequency range between these two 3 dB points, we call it uh, 3 dB bandwidths. Okay. 3 dB bandwidths. So you can see here uh, there is. Uh, small difference between the fast band and the 3 dB bandwidth of the filter. Okay, next uh, we can see uh, rejection. Rejection. So, let's go back to the response curve. Here, outside the pass band, what will happen? The filter is designed, as we have discussed, to reduce or eliminate uh, frequencies outside this passband. These unwanted harmonics uh, frequencies must be rejected, must be removed, must be minimized. So what is the ability of your filter to reject uh, these unwanted frequencies, what we call it? A rejection okay so this region what you call it the filter skirts skirts means outside the passband this is unwanted region this is unwanted region the filter is designed to remove all frequencies in outside the passband so the quality of the filter is its rejection okay how much the filter can reject these unwanted uh, signals, what we call it rejection. So as you can see here, the term rejection tells how much undesired frequency is attenuated. Uh, what is the skirt of the filter? Uh, as you can see here, on either side of the passband, 
you can see signal signals frequencies uh, are greatly attenuated so in the pass band the pass band in this region as you can see here the attenuation is only 0.5 db what do you call this we call it insertion loss but when you go to another frequency let's say here uh, frequency at this point if you this frequency let's say fa at this point if you draw at this point if you see it here the attenuation will be here if you take frequency fb so look here fa is outside the passband but fp is inside the passband so if you draw up at this, how much is the attenuation? The attenuation will be 0 0.5 dB as an example. We call it what? Insertion loss. Because the attenuation is very small because this frequency is inside our passband. But this frequency FA, which is unwanted frequency outside this band, is attenuated by very high attenuation. This, this axis is attenuation versus frequency. Okay? maybe 50 db fb frequency fb is attenuated by only 0 0.5 db when it passes through the filter but this frequency fa is attenuated by how much 50 db attenuation is very high for high frequencies attenuation is very small uh, sorry, attenuation is will be very high for frequencies outside the band, and minimum attenuation uh, for frequencies inside the pass band. So that's why we call filters a frequency selective device. Fre filters can be defined as a frequency selective device, which provides minimum attenuation for specific frequencies high very high attenuation for uh, other frequencies that's why we call it frequency selective component okay. so the higher the rejection it is the better the filter if you have two filters one with a rejection uh, 40 db Another filter with rejection sixty dB. What does it mean? Both filters may have a pass band. The pass band of these filters may be the same. Okay, so. These filters may be designed to pass uh, from two up to three gigahertz. Okay, just as an example, uh, that's a pass band range. One filter with rejection 40, another filter with rejection 60. Which filter has the ability to reduce or eliminate unwanted frequencies? outside this frequency range this filter has higher attenuation so it's good quality it rejects uh, attenuates these unwanted frequencies with attenuation of 60 db compared with the false filter with 40 db rejection let's see one example So uh, we have here microwave oscillator, microwave oscillator, uh, this oscillator on our transmitter side with power 100 milliwatt.
milliwatt and a frequency one gigahertz oscillator. The signal which generates one gigahertz uh, frequency, 100 milliwatt oscillator. Uh, then it is connected to uh, a filter a filter sorry a mixer what we call it up converter mixer so this up local oscillator generates nine gigahertz just as an example so this is up converter mixer which has loss of 5 d 5 db loss okay so when this intermediate frequency from the uh, our oscillator 1 gigahertz if is 1 gigahertz local oscillator is 9 gigahertz so what will be the rf this is up converter in transmitter circuits we need to increase the frequency so uh, it is a summation right so what will be the output frequency it will be one gigahertz here is one gigahertz the if frequency is one gigahertz so one plus nine tariff will be increased to 10 gigahertz we have discussed why we need to increase frequency in our transmitter circuits uh, high frequency means uh, high energy we can transmit for longer distance high frequency means components will be smaller uh, high frequency means we have very good uh, resolution for radar and so on. jamming will be difficult for high frequency so high frequency provides many advantages so by using up converter mixer here we scale up the frequency of our oscillator from one gigahertz to 10 gigahertz. Uh, then here we have our amplifier, RF amplifier here, mostly high power amplifiers. Uh, so this amplifier, let's say it has gain of 20 dB. Okay. 20 dBK. Then this goes to the our circulator, which is here used as a duplexer. Okay, so port one is here, port two is here, port two goes to uh, the antenna. Port 3 will connect our receiver circuit. Okay. So the circulator, this circulator has this circulator. It has insertion loss of one dB. And isolation, we have discussed so, so in circulators, so isolation forty dB. Okay, this is a specification of the, the circulator we used uh, in this system. 
then here we have the no noise amplifier or lna uh, with gain of low noise amplifiers that have very high gain let's say 60 db gain okay then we put the, de the device we have discussed today which is our band pass filter okay the electrical symbol for band pass filter will be like this okay so this is our uh, band pass filter so our band pass filter number one band pass filter number one in my in our design it has insertion loss zero point five TB and rejection sixty TB. And the pass band so let's assume uh, a band pass filter with flat pass band, no ripple. Okay, no ripple. This is the frequency versus attenuation. So the passband range, passband range, okay, what we call it the passband, the frequency which is allowed to pass is from eleven point five gigahertz, the frequency is in gigahertz, up to twelve point five. So what does it mean? If the frequency is between 11.5 and 12.5, signal passes with only 0.5 dB attenuation, we call it insertion loss. If the frequency is outside this, which means less than 11.5 or greater than 12.5, the attenuation will be 60 dB rejection. That is our one pass filter one okay next on the receiver side we have a circulator sorry uh, let me use same oscillator for both receiver and transmitter which is called current receiver so this is a mixer but in this case it is down converter mixer down converter mixer okay so this mixer also has a loss of 5 db okay. so this is the frequency rf okay. the rf frequency which comes from the antenna side this is the local oscillator. Local oscillator can generate how much? 9 gigahertz. Okay. Now the antenna receives with our uh, RX frequency, let's say 12 gigahertz. It is how much? 12 gigahertz. Okay. 
So this 12 gigahertz RF comes here. RF is how much? 12 gigahertz from the antenna. 9 gigahertz is our local oscillator. This is down converter, so it is subtraction. 12 minus 9 will be, what will be the IF? This will be our IF frequency. Will be FRF minus is down converter, right? Minus F local oscillator. So 12 minus uh, 9 will be how much? 3 gigahertz intermediate frequency. In the receiver side, before decoding, right? Before demultiplexing, before demodulation, uh, we need to reduce the carrier frequency from RF to uh, IF to make our signal processing easy for the receiver circuit. Uh, we use down converter mixer. Here is another filter so before that we put one more amplifier here uh, this is IF amplifier amplifier with gain of 20 dB then here we have a bandpass filter Fire. This is band pass filter two. Then uh, we have our receiver. When I say the receiver, we modulate, we decode our information, and so this is our receiver. So now we have another filter here, band pass filter two. Band pass filter two. This band pass filter has insertion loss of uh, 0 0.5 given. And uh, a rejection. Let's say this filter has less rejection, uh, 40 dB rejection. And the pass band, the frequency response of this filter uh, looks like this. So this filter is designed with, sorry, again, flat pass band. So the uh, frequency F1, will be uh, 2.5 gigahertz the minimum and the maximum 3.5 gigahertz 2.5 minimum maximum 3.5 frequency this axis is frequency in gigahertz okay this is attenuation so this is the attenuation in the pass band 0.5 dB given insertion loss any frequency less than 2.5 or greater than 3.5 will be attenuated by 40 dB. Now the question is, uh, how much power received? Calculate PR here. How much power received by the antenna? If the antenna peaks one milliwatt power, milliwatt power, the antenna with frequency how much? 12 gigahertz, one milliwatt power comes from the antenna. How much power reaches the receiver? PR, that's the first question. Okay, next.
how much power the frequency tx how much the transmitter frequency as you can see here oscillator generates one gigahertz uh, local oscillator is nine so one plus nine will be because up converter it's add one plus nine ten ten gigahertz is the transmitted ten gigahertz is the transmitted frequency but the received one is 12 gigahertz. Now, this 10 gigahertz frequency, when it tries to transmit to through the antenna, because of the isolation of the circulator, this circulator, as you know, is clockwise circulator. So if signal comes from at port one, all signal expected to go directed to, to port two and transmitted. How much frequency? 10 gigahertz transmitter frequency, which comes from our transmitter side, right? But small amount of power also go in the wrong direction, right? In the wrong direction from port one to port three. This is what called leakage from transmitter to the receiver, which causes interference. This 10 gigahertz signal, TX, instead of going to the antenna, a small part will come to the receiver and cause interference. So these filters, bandpass filter one and bandpass filter two, uh, they are also used here to, they have to reject this 10 gigahertz. They only receive what? receive the signal which comes from the antenna side, 12 gigahertz, but 10 gigahertz signal which comes from the transmitter side must be rejected. So second question, how much power leakage, leakage power from from transmitter, to our receiver. Uh, which frequency? The 10 gigahertz transmitter frequency will come to the receiver. We don't need to this 10 gigahertz. This 10 gigahertz will go to the antenna, it must be transmitted. But it will come to our receiver. If you go high power like radar, if there is a leakage, this very high power, radar uses very high power transmitter signal. If this high power signal comes to the receiver, it will damage the receiver because receivers are very sensitive device. Uh, we have to protect it from this high power. Trans our own transmitted signal will come in the wrong direction to the receiver side. Uh, it, it may damage the receiver or it may cause interference. So how much that power leakage? In this case, these filters must pass only what? The receive signal reject any unwanted signal. So let's see. So first, first question is how much power we received here? Okay. So let's start from the antenna power. How much? One milliwatt. So our solution here. Start from the antenna. Here we have what? A circulator. Circulator goes to the low, low noise amplifier. From low noise amplifier, we have a bandpass filter number one. Uh, our bandpass filter number one from the bandpass filter we have what uh, a down converter mixer from down converter mixer we have if amplifier from air amplifier another bandpass filter then it reaches what it reaches the receiver so this is antenna power. Go through how many components. 
go through the circulator here. This is the circulator, clockwise circulator, which is used as a duplexer here. Uh, the low noise amplifier, right? Bandpass filter, down converter mixer, another bandpass filter, and uh, the receiver. So let's see how much power uh, PA one milliwatts given, right? So always it's better to convert um, this power in dBm to make our analysis easy. So one milliwatt means how much dBm? You know how to convert milliwatt into dBm. So dBm is equal to tail log of the given power. In this case is one milliwatt. The given power divided by one milliwatt, right? That is uh, how to convert this milliwatt into so log of one will be zero. So one milliwatt is if you put it in dBm, it will be how much? Zero dBm. So one dBm is zero dBm. Okay. Now signal comes here. We have what? A circulator. So this is port one, port two, port three. So when a signal follows the correct direction from port two to port three, what is our circulator insertion loss? It is only one dB. So we lose zero dB the antenna power, zero dBm, sorry, not dB. DBM minus what is the loss in the circulator? Is it insertion loss or isolation? If signal goes in the correct direction, it is insertion loss. If signal goes in the wrong direction, we subtract isolation. We have discussed circulators last time. In this case, what is the given insertion loss for our circulator? Here, uh, it is 1 dB. So minus 1 dB. It is a loss. What's the next device? The low noise amplifier, right? So how much this low noise amplifier given? Gain 60 dB, it is given. So if it is gain, what you should do? You have to add 60 dB. Any other device? Yes, here we have what? Band pass filter number one. Now, what is the frequency which comes from the antenna? FRX, 12 gigahertz. So in your filter, 12 gigahertz, is it in the pass band or the outside? So we have to check our band pass filter one here. So what is the incoming frequency? 12 gigahertz. As you can see here, 12 is between here, the center frequency. This band pass filter, if the frequency is between 11.5, 12.5, the attenuation is only how much? 0 0.5 insertion loss. Because 12 gigahertz frequency is Inside the pass band of this band pass filter one, you have to see the characteristics. If it is outside, it will be reduced by how much? It is rejected by 60 dB. If it is inside the pass band, you subtract only how much? 0 0.5. Now 12 gigahertz is inside the pass band, so we subtract only the insertion loss 0 0.5. So this signal, 12 gigahertz, which comes from the antenna side, allowed to pass through the filter only with 0 0.5 dB uh, attenuation. Next is the mixer. What is the mixer? How much? It has a loss, 5 dB. So loss means you have to uh, subtract from the mixer 5 dB loss. Okay, what's the next device? This IF amplifier. 
IF amplifier. So IF amplifier as gain is given 20 dB gain. So gain means you have to you have to add how much? 20 dB. One more device, this band pass filter 2. Now band pass filter 2 as you can see here, uh, it's designed to pass between 2.5 and 3.5. If frequency is between these two, attenuation is only 0 0.5. If your frequency is outside this, attenuation will be 40 dB. Now let's check. Uh, what is our frequency? The incoming is 12 gigahertz, but this 12 gigahertz is down converted by this mixer into what? Into 3 gigahertz, right? This is a mixer which reduces the frequency. 3 gigahertz comes here, not the 12 gigahertz. Before this filter, there is a down converter mixer. So 3 gigahertz is our frequency now. So let's check our filter. Where is 3? 2.5, 3.5, 3 is between. So it's inside the fast band. How much loss? Only uh, 0.5 plus. Then it reaches what? It reaches the receiver. This will be PR. Start from the antenna, circulator, low noise amplifier, band pass filter one, mixer, uh, IF amplifier, and another filter, band pass filter. So how much is this? I think seventy-three. I think seventy-three. Very good system, right? 73 dBm power reach the receiver. It's good. What is the frequency reach the receiver? Only 3 gigahertz. Because of what? This 12 gigahertz frequency does not reach uh, the receiver. Receiver gets uh, 3 gigahertz because of this down converter mixer. This is part part A. Now part B. How much power leakage from the transmitter side, from transmitter side, and reach the receiver? How much? Uh, it's 10 gigahertz, right? So let's see the pass. The part B. Okay. Part B, let's start from the oscillator. Oscillator, our oscillator generates what? 100 milliwatt power. It's better to convert it into dBm. Okay, so what's the next device? The next device is mixer. Up converter mixer. The next device is the hour amplifier, right? Next device is the circulator. Now we are not calculating the transmitter. We are calculating what? This frequency, how much leakage go to the receiver side. So here we have known as amplifier. Here we have a first bandpass filter. Right? Uh, let 
cost one pass filter. Next is the down converter mixer. Next, the IF amplifier. Next, another filter. One pass filter, two. And reach the receiver. How much? Leakage. From where? Not from the antenna. Uh, from the transmitter side. How much power got, come from our transmitter side to the receiver? What frequency? We need to calculate this. What is the frequency? We'll see. Okay, so this frequency is one gigahertz. Our oscillator generates one gigahertz, 100 milliwatt. So what we have to do first, convert 100 milliwatt into dBm. So dBm is equal to? 10 log, we have discussed uh, the advantages of dB and dBm term terminology, so 100 milliwatts given power divided by 1 milliwatt, right? So this will be, milliwatt get cancelled, log of 102, it will be 20 dBm. That's the amount of power generated by the oscillator in dBA. So how much here? 20 dBA. We start with 20 dBA. Okay. Now this signal go to the mixer. This up converter mixer has loss of 5 dB. Mixers are lossy devices, too much loss, 5 dB. Okay, that's why immediately after a mixer, you'll find amplifier. So this RF amplifier here has gain of 20 dB. So gain means what? 20 dB. Next what? Next circulator. Okay. So this circulator, if signal goes from port one to port three in the wrong direction because this is clockwise you see in the wrong direction which one you take you take from our circulator here you see isolation how much this circulator isolation 40 db okay so minus 40 db because the signal goes in the wrong direction it comes here and instead of going to the antenna it leaked to the receiver side from our own transmitter. Okay, next device, low noise amplifier. This amplifier, we call it no noise because it generates a small amount of noise, but any frequency will be amplified. Uh, what is ampli the gain here? 60 dB. Even the in, when you see the first case, this low noise amplifier, what is the gain? 60 dB. Right? So what is the required frequency? 12 gigahertz, our signal. It's amplified by how much? 60 dB. In this case, this frequency 1 gigahertz, local oscillator is 9 gigahertz, the frequency is 10 gigahertz, which is unwanted, right? Unwanted frequency, but it's amplified by 60. Low noise amplifier, whether it is noise or signal, it, everything is amplified by the same amount. So this unwanted 10 gigahertz amplified by 60 dB by the low noise amplifier. Next, band pass, uh, band pass uh, filter number one right band pass filter number one here as you can see here uh, band pass filter one what is the frequency of here 
the frequency which comes from the transmitter side is 10 gigahertz, right? This unwanted 10 gigahertz. Is it inside the passband or outside? So it is 10 here, less than 11.5, which means outside the uh, passband of this passband filter one. We, when it is outside, we are considering what? Rejection. Okay. So this 10 gigahertz signal, which comes from the transmitter side, attenuated by how much? By CT stick dim. Now here you see the uh, importance of filter. Filters are designed to reject, to attenuate these unwanted frequencies. Uh, in this case, you see 12 gigahertz comes from the antenna side, which is what we need. So this band pass filter passes the 12 gigahertz with only 0 0.5 dB loss, okay? only insertion loss, but the 10 gigahertz interference comes from the transmitter side, uh, rejected by how much? By 60 dB, okay, by this frequency selective uh, device. That's why we call it this important component of uh, microwave systems. Okay, so minus how much? Because it is 10 gigahertz, which is outside the passband of this, it's rejected by rejected by CKST, rejection, rejection by CKST, okay, rejected by CKST. Next, mixer, mixer has a loss of 5 dB, All right, loss. So, loss means uh, minus 5, then I have amplifier, gain of 20 it is gain of 20 so we, we put plus 20 then another band pass filter here uh, pass filter what is the characteristics of this filter it this is designed to pass between 2.5 and 3.5 but this noise, which comes from the transmitter side, a leakage, unwanted signal, it is 10 gigahertz uh, minus 9, right? This is the converter mixer. 10 minus 9 will be 1 gigahertz. So as you can see here, 1 gigahertz is outside the passband of the band pass filter 2. If it is outside, which one you consider? Rejection or insertion loss? We consider what? Rejection. How much rejection this filter? 14. So this unwanted signal rejected, decreased by how much? 40 dB. Look here. We put how many filters? Two filters. Because this is unwanted frequency, the first filter reduces it by 60 dB. Attenuated. Second filter attenuated by how much? 40 dB. If you add more filters, you, you add more attenuation. Okay, that's why we mostly we connect filters in cascade. Okay, the first filter rejected by 60, second filter re, uh, rejected by 40. So total rejection will be, total attenuation will be 100 dB. Okay, this unwanted signal is uh, attenuated by 60 dB using the first filter. 40 dB using the second filter. So how much is this leakage power? Which receive, which reach the, uh, the receiver. So this security get canceled. Uh, this is minus 10, minus 90, plus 40, uh, minus 50, I think. You know, check it, please. Minus 50 dBm, if you convert it into milliwatt, uh, it will be 0, 0.00 something, very small power. 
why this power is minimized because of these two filters they attenuate it is because unwanted leakage is very small amount of power leakage power reach the uh, reach the, the our receiver because of bandpass filter one and bandpass filter two they are designed to reject these unwanted frequencies outside the pass band the first one designed with rejection 60 second filter designed with rejection second one rejection 40 here first filter 60 db rejection uh, and the first filter is designed with pass band from 11.5 to 12.5 second filter is designed pass band with 2.5 up to 2.5 gigahertz okay 